Another sign that Chicago is returning to normal, conventions are beginning to return to the city. Meetings and events at McCormick Place Convention Center in particular were a $1.9 billion economic impact on the city, one that nearly disappeared during the pandemic. McCormick Place, of course, sits in the South Loop, which is where Brandis Friedman and producer Quinn Myers spent the day reporting as part of our In Your Neighborhood series. So Brandis, as I understand, the auto show is set for its triumphant return, is it not? That's right, Paris, it is, and it's actually going to be right here at McCormick Place, um, as it has been in the past, of course, but it will be different from what we have seen in years past, being in uh, July instead of in February. We're going to have a lot more on that, uh, as well as the return of conventions coming up a little bit later on with the CEO of McCormick Place. Um, but right now, we're on the rooftop garden of one of the buildings of McCormick Place. I am directly above the intersection of Cermak and Indiana. I've got Wintrust Arena right across the street. Um, in the South Loop, of course, it sits in the near South Side community area, which is home to 24,000 uh, Chicagoans. And of course, it's home to plenty of restaurants, businesses and music venues. Now, third ward older person Pat Dowell, who is the older person for this neighborhood, she says the community is working to be more connected with the convention center with $10 million in tax increment financing going towards streetscaping along Motor Road to support the foot traffic into the businesses here, along with other uh, other improvements and other investments. She she adds that while the businesses in this area did fairly well during the pandemic and more businesses are in the works, the conventions add even more value. We're real excited about the auto show coming back. We're very excited about uh, more attention at Chinatown. Chinatown's reopening. So the real goal is to try to connect the South Loop, McCormick Place, Motor Row with McCormick Place and Chinatown and Bronzeville. And we're going to hear more from Alderperson Pat Dowell about the work that's happening here in the South Loop, as well as her thoughts on the city's violence and some changes at the city council uh, coming up a little bit later in the program. But one of those longstanding businesses that we've been talking about here, it's called Reggie's. It's a restaurant and live music venue, uh, comedy venue as well in the South Loop. Owner Robbie Glick says that since the city reopened, his customers have been coming back in full force. And he's thankful that it provides work for the various people who make a venue like his run from the wait staff to the lighting engineers who produce live music performances. And it's those same behind the scenes folks who work at the convention center who make up a big part of his customer base. It's mainly the, the people that set up and tear down the shows. So mostly the the decorators, the riggers, the uh, the carpenters, and the teamsters that work over there that come in here for their for their lunch and and come back after their gig. Glick says he typically has about 50 bands a week between his three venues there at Re Reggie's, but they're not quite up to that level just yet, but he is expecting performances to pick up significantly in the fall. He says the opportunity to perform and to hear live music is something his customer base really missed during the pandemic. People don't, uh, they don't realize that when it's gone, like music is very therapeutic and when it's gone, and it comes back, it's the little things in life, really. I mean, it's, uh, people have missed it. Now, around the corner from Reggie's and just north of Motor Row is what's called Record Row, home to Chicago's rich blues history. We stopped inside Chess Records, which is where musical greats like Etta James, Chuck Berry, Willie Dixon made their music and others. We spoke with the executive director of what's called Willie Dixon's Blues Heavens Foundation. It keeps the memory of Willie Dixon alive here and about uh, the hallowed walls of Chess Records and how they just restarted tours this week after 16 months. I would like to see the city of Chicago embrace the musical genre that they have. Very few cities can actually claim a genre of music. Chicago blues is actually a genre in itself. And as Willie Dixon said, the blues are the roots, the rest are the fruits. Just about all music does stem somewhere from blues music. So there's the musical history on Record Row, there's the uh, car history on Motor Row, but there's also the architectural history in the South Loop. We visited Glessner House. Now it is one of the original Prairie Avenue homes of the late 19th century. It was built in 1887 by architect Henry Hobson Richardson, of course, for the Glessner family. They, along with a number of other families, moved to the area, and at the time it was a great show of their wealth and their success.
So the South Loop was very popular because it was close to downtown. It was easy to get to their businesses, and you didn't have to worry about crossing the river. And so it was really the, the immediate hub for these families to move to. By the early 20th century, though, as the city grew and it was easier to get to other parts of the city, people left the South Loop, and it really went through a long period of decline through much of the 20th century, which is why most of the houses around Glessner House were ultimately lost. And today, only seven of those original 90 homes are still standing. But Bill Tyre, who the book on Prairie Avenue and its history, says homes Glessner House are important to understand the city's history and how it grew so rapidly when it did. And many of the Chicago institutions that we know today, like the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and the Art Institute of Chicago, were started by the Glessners and their contemporaries. Now, of course, Tyre says that he is witnessing the, the return of the South Loop from that decline that he mentioned that happened earlier in the mid uh, 20th century, but that return has been happening over the last 20 to 25 years. And he says it's for the same reason as it did more than 100 years ago. And that's, of course, because of its proximity to the lake and to the loop. Now, coming up in a bit, as I mentioned, we're going to hear more from Alderperson Pat Dowell. Um, and later, we're going to hear from the McCormick Place CEO about the changes that they have made here uh, in order to return conventions to McCormick Place. But for now, Paris, we'll send it back to you.